Hello, welcome to today's video. I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for being here. So today we're going to be talking about my product empties and a couple of products that I don't think I'm going to be keeping any longer for reasons that I will explain. Um, I'm going to jump right in. I don't want this video to be too long. Um, not all of the products are kind of recent releases. They're just products I realise that I've run out of um, or that I'm about to run out of and I'm going to chat a little bit about whether I think I'm going to repurchase them or not. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, then just keep on watching. Yes, this is a laundry basket full of empty stuff. I have my list here in front of me and I'm just going to literally go with what's in front of me. So it's kind of going to be a mix of like beauty, makeup, skincare, hair care, tan, that kind of thing. So first thing here is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade One Fair. So this basically I loved, I used consistently for like a year, more, no, more than a year, and it broke. Um, so I basically have almost none left. You can see like there is bits in here and sometimes I do dip into them, but it's most supposed to be a pressed powder um, and I can't really bring it anywhere because it's obviously quite messy. It is a beautiful powder. I wouldn't have used it up so much if I hadn't liked it. Um, it does make your makeup look really set and flawless as suggests. It is a beautiful powder. Would I purchase this again? I'm not too sure because I bought the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder since I bought this one and I think, well, I know there's far more product in that one and I, and I think I prefer loose powder as opposed to pressed powder. I think it lasts a lot longer. Um, yeah, I'm probably more likely to repurchase the Laura Mercier one than this one, just the price difference even because you get so much more in the Laura Mercier one and I just think I prefer that formula. Um, and I probably won't have to buy the Laura Mercier one for a very long time. I've had it for, God, has it been a year or two years by now and it's still going strong. It is such a great product. Next is the Maybelline Dream Cushion Foundation. I think this came out last year, the year before. Comes with, you know, kind of standard, that type of packaging and you have your mirror and then you open up and you have your cushion. Um, I use this a lot. I remember when I was going to work on the train. I don't think, you know, the shade range isn't great. It's only a few shades. It definitely needs to be worked on. I got this in the shade Nude. Um, and I think I remember being quite, I haven't used it in a while. I remember being quite dark. I don't think it was bad, but it definitely wasn't my favorite foundation. And I've since bought cushion foundations that I prefer the formula of. So I don't think I would repurchase this. Um, just for that reason. And it was a bit pricey for a Maybelline foundation. I remember at the time people were thinking that that's a bit expensive, but I think it's because it was their first, I think, um, kind of cushion formula. So that probably upped the price a little bit. So yeah, there's that. Next is the Studio Fix um, foundation by MAC. Not completely empty, but there's really very little in it there. Um, this is a classic. I wore this consistently for about a year. I really liked it. Thought it was great for top ups. I didn't think powder foundations could give you that much coverage until I started using this. And I discovered they can. And would I repurchase this? Yes, I think I would. Um, it's really good even for just adding coverage on top of foundation you already have on. Um, and I obviously did like it because it's rare that I really completely use a product. So clearly I did. I think I may have found a dupe for this though. I haven't tested it yet, but I will in a future video. So hang on for that. Next in here, I have the Bondi Sans Self Tan Eraser. So this is the first self tan eraser that I had used. Normally I just use some sort of scrub or exfoliating glove. Um, and obviously they make your skin quite red and they're quite harsh. So I wanted to try this out. This is basically empty. Um, does it work? It it does work. I just don't rely solely on these when taking off tan. Um, it says leave on for five minutes. I would leave it on for at least 10, 15 minutes, then go shower it off. Um, the smell is quite strong on the on these kind of products. I kind of expected that when I was using it. 
and I would definitely say you're still gonna have to use some sort of exfoliating glove around areas like, you know, elbows, knees, ankles, um, even kind of air, this area here in your collarbone, the tan can really stick to. You still have to use, I find anyway, you still have to use an exfoliating glove for those areas. Um, and then as well, I had a problem with this where ha halfway through there was still a lot left and the pump stopped working. Yeah, I had to pour it out into my hands and use this liquid and rub that on. I didn't really like that. Um, pump is supposed to be kind of cleaner and handier. So that kind of annoyed me. So I don't think I'd repurchase this because so many other brands have come out with self-tanner razors since I bought this and they're way cheaper. From what I can see in the back, they all contain the same ingredients. So I don't think I'd repurchase it just for that. Um, but I'll try the other ones I bought that are less expensive. And if they work, you know, if, if they work the same, there's no need for me to spend more money and buy this again. If they don't work, then yeah, I would definitely consider it because it does save me scrubbing my body excessively to get tan off because I find it so hard to get off. Um, yeah, I think this is one of the first tanner ages I came out and there's loads of them. Almost every, ta every brand that makes tan now has erasers, which I think is great. So that's that. Um... Right, more makeup. I have, now this isn't empty. This is the LA Girl Pro Coverage um, HD Longwear Illuminating Foundation. I bought this on Beauty Bay about two years ago and I just didn't like it. Um, I just couldn't get on with it. I think I found, I haven't worn it in so long because I didn't like it. I found it really thick. I just wasn't a fan of this. It also is not the right colour for me. It's far too dark. I know you can buy a whitener, I found that out afterwards, but I just didn't like the formula, so I left it. So I think... <sighs> I might try it once more. Um, the other thing is now it's old. Oh, six months. It's well expired. No, I'm probably just going to have to throw it out. And if, if I want to buy it again, I'll just order it probably from Beauty Bay or the LA Girl UK website and try to get the right colour because that is definitely not the right colour for me. I believe a lot of people do really like this, but I just didn't get on with it. But maybe if I got the right colour, I might prefer it. I'm not too sure. Um, this one is a maybe. This one is as in I'll, I might I might purchase it again in a different colour. Um, and then I have two of the Bourjois Healthy Mix Foundations. One of these is... Um, Full, fuller than the other because I, ba I basically got two shades. I got kind of a lighter shade. I can't see it on this. I don't know. I don't know what that one is. And the second one is dark beige. I got that for when I'm tanned. Um, this one is about half. Yeah, they're both about, about halfway used up. I clearly did like this because I bought two of them. Um, I haven't worn them in a long time because to be honest, I think they're expired. I should probably throw them out. Um, yeah, no, I think I did like it. This was kind of the first really kind of radiant foundation I tried. So as far as I know, a lot of people really like these as well. Um, would I repurchase this? Yeah, I think I think I would repurchase it to try it. It's just that I have so many other foundations since that I've bought that are a little bit less expensive and are just brilliant. Um, but yeah, I probably will pick it up at some point in, in the future. I do like Bourjois as a brand. I don't have a lot of their stuff, but I do like the stuff that I've tried from them. Next, I have the Kiko Skin Tone Foundation. So I really like Kiko. I always buy um, stuff from Kiko when I'm abroad. And I remember I bought this. This is completely empty. This was one of their more expensive foundations. This is all, I think, about... I think this was almost about 20 euro. This says here, highlighting liquid foundation. I do recall this being quite um, kind of luminous and dewy. Um, and it's completely empty, so obviously I did like it. I wouldn't have used it up otherwise. I got the shade Neutral 20. Can I pick it up again? I'm not too sure. I think I would just basically want to try another Kiko foundation, um, apart from this one. But yeah, I obviously did like it because I used it all up. Uh, next, skincare is the Environ Skin Essence A Mild Cleansing Lotion. So I bought this kind of during my time um, getting microneedling at therapy clinic, which I have to get two more sessions of. Uh, this is basically empty and I have been literally like opening it and screwing the top off to try get some of the outside. This is quite a creamy cleanser. Um, 
I think I'll probably speak to my therapist the next time because I think she wants me to use something a bit lighter because I, I can get breakouts. But I found this really good during winter because my skin was so dried out from the central heating and the cold and everything. Um, so I really, I really like this, really gentle. Use it twice a day before double cleansing and I really liked it. I would repurchase it, but it just depends if my therapist thinks I should change to a kind of gel or a lighter formula for summer. But yeah, I really like this. Next is the Nivea Micelle Air Skin Breathe Professional Makeup Remover. 0% product residue and this is the water for waterproof uh, mascara. Um, the one that came out before this, I think it's the kind of blue bottle with the white lid, I've bought several times, I really like it. I just wanted to buy this one, it was newer, it was in Boots um, a while ago and I wanted to try it out. I'm not sure that it's as good as the original one, which just sounds weird because this one takes off waterproof mascara, I can't remember if the other one does. But I just feel like I've had to scrub a little bit more with this one and as a result I've had to use more of it. So that's gone down really fast. So I think, to be honest, I'm going to go back to... Uh, this is almost gone. I'm going to go back to the original one because it worked for me. Next I have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. So I got this originally in the shade Soft Beige, which I don't think is the right colour for me. It's basically kind of dried out now. Yeah. The only thing with this foundation is it smells like paint stripper almost. It does not have a pleasant smell. Um, and some people kind of didn't like that, but, but the smell I found anyway doesn't linger on your skin once it's set on your face. Um, and I don't recall my skin having any problems specifically from this product, so I think it's, you know, I think it's fine. It just depends on if you really can't handle fragrance. And I obviously do like it because I bought another one recently. Um, so I got it in the shade Nude Ivory, so that's paler, you can see, than this one. So I bought the new newer one on Beauty Bay. I haven't tried it yet, but I will probably try it in a video soon. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend that one. Wet n Wild is a great brand, I've spoken about them before. They're cruelty free and it's very affordable. I think it's under 10 euro. Really, really affordable. Uh, next I have the, oh yeah, the Clinique uh, Take the Day Off. Cleansing Balm. I've spoken about this extensively on my Instagram. Um, this is probably my holy grail kind of cleanser. I would use this as the first cleanser. Um, it just, it, it turns, it's a balm to oil formula. It just cuts through the makeup and I know when I use it, the makeup is going to come off my face. I'm not going to have any product left in my face, which is what I want. And it's completely empty. It lasted so long. I think I bought this a year ago. It lasted so long doesn't have a strong fragrance and my skin doesn't get irritated by it. I really, really, really love it. I think it's brilliant. So much so that I bought a brand new one um, a week or two ago. I've kind of gone through that there. So yeah, I love that one. and I know it has a big uh, cult following and I can understand why. So now for some concealers. I have the L'Oreal True Match Concealer. Um, I can't remember much about this. I feel like this is a really small tube, like it's really thin. Um, I think I did like this. It's quite light. Um, I know every concealer since, you know, Shape Tape and Makeup Revolutions and um, Conceal and Divine, since then all concealers that come out have the big doe foot applicator and their thicker formula. This is quite nice if you want a kind of lighter, kind of more creamier formula. I obviously did like it because I've basically used it all up. So um, yeah, I think this is another really good one at the drugstore. Next we have the Maybelline Instant Anti-Age Eraser. I got this uh, in the shade Light. First of all, it's the one with the sponge on top. Some people don't like it, I do. Um, you can see there, I've it's only a tiny bit kind of there at the bottom. I've basically used it all up and I decided recently that I wanted to repurchase it. So I did, but I got it in the shade Fair. So light is more kind of yellow toned and fair is kind of more neutral, leaning a little bit pink toned. I really like it. It's really brightening under the eyes. Um, I'll always, I think, go back to this concealer. It's so good. It's, it's creamy, it's hydrating. It doesn't look too heavy on your eyes. It never looks cakey. It is a brilliant, brilliant formula. I'll always go back to this, highly recommend. Next I have the Revlon Colorstay Concealer in the shade 01 Fair, which isn't super fair, to be honest. I think I liked this. I think I did. I bought this because loads of people, it was just there, 
loads of people were um, recommending it. But I think I just found other concealers since that I preferred. I think it is quite good for, you know, um, a very affordable concealer. And I know a lot of people like it. If it's not expired, I'll probably try to use it up in the next few weeks or just use it once or twice um, just to see, do I still like it? So I'll let you know how I get on with that. Okay, next we have another foundation. So I have the Note Luminous Moisturising Foundation. This featured in my Favourites of 2018 video. It's just about gone, it's maybe one application left in it. This is in the shade 02 Natural Beige. This is a beautiful foundation. Such good coverage, feels light in the skin. Luminous but not too luminous, never looks cakey. It is so good. I think it's about 10 euro. Highly recommend it. And I would definitely repurchase it if I ever use up one of my other million foundations. It is really, really good. Um, now, next I have a brow product. I have the L'Oreal Paris Brow Artist Plumper. I love this stuff. There's almost, there's very little coming off on that now. And this is in the shade light medium. The only thing is I, there's only, I think two or three shades in these. And I find like this one is a bit too light. And I think the next one up is too dark. I use this anyway, cause I really like it. Um, it never makes your brows look like crusty and hard. You know, some gels can do that. It's really, really nice. It adds, um, it definitely does plump them and makes your brows look really full. I really like it. Would definitely repurchase it. Um, not too expensive, again, available at the kind of drugstore, chemist kind of shop. Um, I love just putting this through my brows after using a pencil or a pomade or something. It's really, really good. Next, I have the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. So I spoke about this recently on my Instagram. Um, this one isn't empty. This is actually... This one isn't empty. This is actually a new one. I don't have an empty one because I think I threw it out. But I know that I wore this consistently for about a year, year and a half. I loved it. Um, and then I only just recently rediscovered it. So I got it in the shade, I think it's a 020 Rose Beige, which actually is a bit too dark for me. So I, I just wear it when I'm tanned. And then I picked another one up because it's only about seven euro each. I picked another one up in the shade... 002 Porcelain Beige. I was actually looking for the shade, I think it's 010 Light Beige, but they didn't have it in the, the shop I was in. Um, So I thought this one might be okay. It kind of would probably match my skin tone a bit more than the other one. Um, So yeah, this is a really good foundation. It, you can have a look at my Instagram if you want. I have a little video up there of it. It, like, I was shocked when I went back to using it. I was like, I'm never going to be without this again. It feels beautiful on the skin. You don't need much to get really good coverage. Um, but it actually, like, feels and looks like your skin. It's so lovely. They did such a good job with it. It's so, um, it's so affordable. Highly, highly, highly recommend. And then, lastly, I have a shampoo. This is the Charles Worthington Volume and Bounce Shampoo. I just wanted to mention this because... I think this has actually really helped my hair. So my hair is kind of growing out now. I'm trying to grow it out. It was short last year, but it's growing out now. And obviously you can get quite heavy. And I want my hair to have a bit of movement, a bit of volume in it. And I think this actually does work. It always, my hair always feels lovely after I use this. Um, not all shampoos do that. I don't think they're all made equal. Um, this is really good. This is supposed to have plumping collagen in it. And I do think it really works. Um, and it smells lovely. That's about, I think, about 10 euro with boots and it's really, really good. So yeah, recommend that as well. Okay, I think that is everything. I don't have any eyeshadow products um, or any eyeshadow palettes because, I mean, you don't really... I find like it would take me a long, long time to go through an eyeshadow palette and by the time I do go through it, it's probably expired. So I just don't have any uh, kind of eyeshadow products this time around. So this is the first kind of video I've done of this type. Let me know what you thought down below. Did you like it? Were any of your kind of favorites included in there? Are you interested in any of these? I would love to hear your thoughts. As always, if you want to follow me on my Instagram where I'm kind of more active, um, you can follow me, I'll leave a link down here to it and that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed please do subscribe if you'd like to see more from me and i hope to see you next time thanks a million bye guys <sighs> such a mess oh i'm trying to mentally prepare myself to clean all this up and to wash brushes and sponges and stuff and i've dropped several things on the floor why do i always drop things Oh yeah, and I have to take makeup off my face at some point. 
I have to watch Game of Thrones. I've been avoiding Facebook, Twitter and Instagram today because every time I open it, someone's like, oh, Battle of Winterfell. I'm like, nope, I haven't seen that yet. So, no. Um, I feel like I'm not mentally prepared to watch it, to be honest. So I'm doing this. I'm, I've gotten really invested in it, so... Oh, is that bad? Hmm, we'll see.